this training tip video is focused on correcting your posture. So this comes under the foundational principles as well, but because it's such a massive topic and something you don't want to forget about, I've given it its own video altogether. So one thing that's most often overlooked in training is women's physiques and our biological differences. So men and women are very different. We have different hormones. So men being testosterone based, this making them stronger and more resilient, us being estrogen based, which makes us more supple and more passive. Okay, so these hormones have a different impact on our personalities and our physical structure and our physical purpose. So if you imagine a boy and a girl before puberty, they both look about the same. When you look at, if you fast forward, say five years, you then have a boy, he starts to get broader in the shoulders, but his hips remain about the same. If you look at a woman, usually her hips have become wider and her waist has remained the same. So now we have a different waist to hip ratio. So when you get your waist measurement and your hip measurement, you divide the waist into the hip and the larger that number is, the more difficulty you're going to have with your posture. The reason being that the glutes and abdominals are what support your hips and what supports your hips supports the whole body. And in a man, this doesn't really change too much. And then in a woman, what this does is increases what we call the Q angle. So where we have our hips, and so let's just say our waist is here, our hips are out here and our knees are in here. Okay, so what you have is basically the Q angle comes from the hip joint through to the knee. And the more inward this angle is, if you imagine that's the hips and they're the knees, so the more inward that angle is, then the more dramatic we call the Q angle. I might just pop it up on the screen so you can get a better idea. Okay, as you can see, so if you just remember, the wider the hips, the bigger the Q angle, the harder it is to maintain your posture. And the reason is because as the hips pull apart, the stabilizing muscles of the hips often let go. You know, we're sitting down all day, we're hanging our heads over our phones and that kind of thing, especially when we go through puberty. So we're at school sitting in a chair. So if you're not actively maintaining the connection of those muscles, let's just say you're a gymnast, you know, this is gonna be a foundational element of that activity. So you're not gonna have this problem. Or if you're a girl who doesn't get too wide of a hip, so you end up with a, you know, more sporty physique, you're gonna have less of this problem. But if you have wide hips, highly likely your glutes and your abs have disengaged. And when they disengage, the body has to find somewhere else to put that weight. So it usually goes into the hip flexors, which is the top part of your quads, the front of your thigh, which connects in with your pelvis, and it goes into your lower back. So with tight hip flexors and a tight lower back, this pulls the pelvis out of joint. We then go to do an exercise, and because those muscles are so tight, and the glutes and abs have gone to sleep, and these are foundational muscles for your strength development and your good posture, when we perform an exercise, the right muscles don't work. So we end up with sore knees, sore hips, sore ankles, and this kind of thing. So in the fitness industry, you know, I'm yet to really see many people talk about this. So this is something I learned because my hips are so wide that I had this problem in a really dramatic way. I had inner soles in my shoes to try and hold my feet straight because my arches had collapsed because I was running every day. And I used to run so much that I actually wore the cartilage out in my knees. So I was told I would have to get knee replacements when I was like 17 years old. So I engaged more in weight training and it still took me about maybe six or seven years after that to actually work out what was wrong, to learn how to loosen the muscles, and be able to do something like a squat and a deadlift correctly in a lunge and actually strengthen my glutes and abs to the point where I didn't need the orthotics anymore. I have no knee pain, you know, and I can perform every other exercise that just your average person can do. So when I meet new clients, it's the exact same thing. They all have the same postural weaknesses. So our focus always to start is to loosen all those muscles that have tightened up to try and support the hips and to then restore signaling to the glutes and abs because the nervous system's kind of almost forgotten about it. So your nervous system is the part of your body, you know, your brain that sends a signal down to activate that muscle when you want to move. But what it's done is actually decided there's a different muscle that's responsible for that movement now, not the originally designed muscle. So you have to loosen up the ones that are congesting everything so that you can get the range of motion correct enough that you can actually then get blood into the glutes and abs again. And once you do that, pelvis starts to correct and the, the legs start to straighten up more, the kneecap can realign, and now you can perform exercises to get really great results. You know, so that's kind of key to my coaching really, that makes my business different to every other business, which gets me all the referrals that I get. You know, is women that have had multiple personal trainers and lots of online programs, maybe they've done CrossFit, powerlifting, bodybuilding, they've done all this stuff with other coaches and they're just wondering why they're still not getting results with all of this effort. And this is the only thing that I fix, you know, I don't do anything crazy. I just fix all that up and strengthen their 
and correct their posture. That all fixes up within about three months of regular training. And then from there, all we do is continue trying to build the posterior chain. So the back, glutes, abs, and hamstrings. And that makes the posture really strong. And then from there, you can just keep building on it. So you can get stronger, you can get leaner, you can get more powerful, more resilient, and yeah, all those other magical benefits come in. So that's all for that video. You want to correct your posture if you want to get results and the wider your your hips are as compared to your waist, the more likely you probably have this problem. So I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next one.